to you the latest read on the equity markets at this hour, about 45 minutes into the trading. It is now legal to possess small amounts of marijuana, heroin, and cocaine in Mexico. That country has now decriminalized possession of small amounts of those drugs. It's a move that creates one of the world's most permissive narcotics markets. Julie Myers Wood worked very closely with Mexican authorities on combating these same drug issues when she was an assistant secretary at the Department of Homeland Security under President George W. Bush. She's president of Immigration and Customs Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us. It'll be interesting to see what this does to the the price of illegal drugs in this country. Well, coming up, Facebook needs more than friends and is willing to pay to get what it wants. We'll give you the latest on that company's hiring plans. Here are the headlines you need to know this morning. Top corporate news, Facebook plans to expand the U.S. market. Well, Scottish Justice Secretary Kenny McCaskill defended his decision to release Lockerbie bomber Abdel Basad Ali Al Magrahi in an emergency session of Parliament today. Since that release, both Scotland and First Minister Alex Salmond have received nonstop criticism from the United States. If you remember, Al Magrahi was convicted of killing two. And 170 people in the 1988 bombing of a Pan Am jumbo jet. He was just released from a Scottish prison on compassionate grounds after serving only eight years of that sentence. Al McGrahi uh, is terminally ill with prostate cancer. Joining us now from Edinburgh, Scotland, is Bloomberg's Peter Woodfield. Quick headlines here. Uh, a Scottish minister says he now regrets that Libya did not adhere to assurances of a low-key arrival of uh, the accused Lockerbie bomber. And... Uh, Others. This is Bloomberg News. It's 10.30 a.m. here in New York, exactly one hour into trading on Wall Street. I'm Margaret Brennan. The S&P, the Dow, and well, stock markets in Europe are rising for a third day. So let's cross over to London and Mark Barton, who's going to tell us from London. Uh, while commercial property sales in China actually outstripped the U.S. and the U.K. in the first half of this year, according to a new report, their governments will recover the fastest. Well, Apple stores have become a big hit across the country, drawing large crowds and making the real estate around them more valuable. Monica Bertrand has more on Berg Terminal. The Bank of Israel raised the benchmark interest rate by a quarter of a percentage point. Now, this makes them the first central bank to lift rates since the signs of, of easing in the global recession started in the second quarter. Uh, bank of Israel Governor Stanley Fisher increased the lending rate to three quarters of a percent after keeping it at a record low since March. Two of 12 economists surveyed by Bloomberg now forecasted this increase, very widely expected. The rest expected Fisher to hold the rate steady. This as uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu flies to London. Praised Eugene Munster, Gene Munster, talking earlier on Bloomberg Radio and television about the economy and continuing the equity rally. Welcome back to Bloomberg News. We're going to get you the latest read on the equity trees. Investors have a lot to fret about these days, and corporate pension plans are another new thing to add to that list. Underfunded pensions are at a record high, and markets reporter Bloomberg's Sheila Dharmarajan explains why investors are concerned. Sheila, another. Well, let's take a look outside the world of pensions, the world of equities. What's happening with money itself? Today's currency report, Australia's dollar has been the hot currency this year. But lately, when it comes to placing bets on the Aussie's path, traders are singing a little bit of a different tune. Courtney Donhoe is back, and she's been looking at all of this for us. Courtney, all commodities again. Yeah. Currency report. You can log on to Bloomberg.com for all the latest numbers and stories yourself. Coming up, Microsoft gaining ground in the battle for its media Monday. And now we're looking at the battle between two tech goliaths. The latest punch thrown by Microsoft's Bing Shopping against Google. Traffic to the Microsoft site climbed 169% in just two months. Here to tally up the score, we're joined by Colin Sebastian. Well, coming up here on this show two kinds of green. The first is what track star Usain Bolt is running after. We'll tell you how much he stands to make and the other more PC sort of green. Details on 
Latest on the health care debate. Deputy Press Secretary Bill Burton saying President Obama thinks bipartisan, the bipartisan health bill is still possible. This as President Obama heads out on vacation. His spokesman telling reporters to quote unquote relax if reporters can do that. But Democrats in Congress are not doing that themselves, moving forward with a plan to push through a health care overhaul without support from Republicans. Our Lizzie O'Leary is live in Washington. Lizzie, the Dem seat, Jamaican sprinter, Usain Bolt has the gold, and now he, he wants a little green to go with it. Bolt finished the World Track Championships with three gold medals, two world records. His manager says that $10 million a year is quite a payday for a track athlete. At least 30 players in the NBA made more than that just last year in salary alone. Well, one of New York's best known buildings is going green itself. When the work is complete, officials estimate that the energy that's it for this hour of Bloomberg News. I'm Margaret Brandon. More to come in our next hour as I'm joined by Elliot Gotkin in London. We're just 30 minutes left in the European trading session. We're seeing a sea of green across the pond here in the U.S. We're going to tell you what's behind the rally all up in the next hour here on Bloomberg News half into the trading session here on Wall Street. Let's get you the latest read on the equity trade. The Dow, the S&P, and the Nasdaq continuing to gain a bit of selling, as you could expect in the Treasury market. Well, technology stocks are playing a big role in the recent equity rally, and that's just one of the groups Suzanne O'Halloran's covering down in London. Well, it's a matter of doom versus boom from two very well-known names in finance. Alan Brightman has the story. The first sentencing in the UBS tax case case has been handed down. A Florida judge has sentenced former UBS banker Brad Birkenfeld to 40 months in prison. Bloomberg's Gigi Stone is here with me now to tell us some people were actually surprised he he does to see whether he continues working with the government. Well, cash for clunkers ended this weekend with a spike in sales. Now the program's over. What new incentives are auto dealers ready to